Hello and welcome, my name is John Strand, and in this video we're going to be talking about getting started with TCP Dump. Now, TCP Dump is a fantastic tool, it's one of the core essential tools that every single IT professional should have, especially InfoSec professionals. The reason why is TCP Dump gives us the ability to actually see inside the network traffic that's coming and going from our computer system, and if we're on a span port on a switch, or a mirrored port on a switch, or if we're on a wireless network that broadcasts everything, we can see the, all, all the traffic on that particular interface as well. But the key is first starting out by identifying which interface you're going to look at. Inside of TCP dump, you can run TCP dump space minus capital D. This will actually list out all of the available interfaces that TCP dump has to be able to sniff on. Now it's generally just good practice in 99.99% of the situations to identify the interface you're going to sniff on. And in this situation on my handy dandy security onion system, you can see that there's multiple interfaces that are running. Specifically though, we're going to be looking at the Ethernet interface and this one's named ENS33. Now if you're familiar with some older versions of Linux, you used to call everything ETH0, ETH1, and so on. They changed that recently and we can get into that in a little bit later video. But the name of my Ethernet interface on my security onion system is ENS33. I'm also going to be looking at the local loopback adapter a little bit later. So let's dive in and actually start some sniffing. So I can do TCP dump and then I can actually specify my interface and in this situation I provide ENS33, your Ethernet interface will most likely be different. And I'm also going to add a couple of additional switches. I'm going to add the capital X and the capital A. The reason why I'm putting in the capital X and the capital A is because with those two switches combined, it's going to show me the hexadecimal output and it's going to show me the ASCII decode of that hex. Why is that important? Let me show you. So we're going to run TCP dump, specify the interface as ENS33 on my computer system. Yours will be different. And I do minus capital X and capital A. Now, as soon as I run that, it pops up and it says you do not have permission to actually start sniffing. The reason for this is TCP dump requires super user permissions. On a Linux or a Unix based system, you need to be root. Or on a Windows computer system, if you're running the Windows equivalent called WinDump, you need to be running as administrator because we're going to be running very, very low level permissions to be able to sniff the traffic on a computer. Now to get around this error, if you ever get it, all you need to do is put a sudo in front of it. If you see the XKCD comic, sudo make me a sandwich. This is going to switch user and then do the command TCP dump. It's going to ask me for my password. Put in my password, hit enter, and then TCP dump should be running if I typed my password correctly, which I did not. All right. There we go. Now it's running. So with this, I now want to start sending traffic that TCP dump can see. So I'm going to start by pinging 8.8.8.8, .8 and that's going to be Google's DNS server. And as soon as I hit enter, Huzzah! You can see the packets being sent and the responses coming back from Google. Now, what's interesting about this is I am doing a standard ping of Google. I'm sending an ICMP echo request to Google, and you can see that Google is responding. But what's interesting is if you look at what's being sent, you can see I'm sending to Google, could you please send back 01234567? And then the reply down here, you can see the request, and then the reply is 01234567. Okay, so that's, it's not all that interesting. All right, I get it. All right, so now let's change this up just a hair. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna specify a different adapter. I'm gonna specify my local loopback adapter. And I'm gonna actually send some data back and forth. So whenever I start up TCP dump, I'm gonna fire up Netcat. Because I'm old, people. I'm going to run netcat listening on port 2222. Then I'm going to connect. We're going to send data through that. So there I have my netcat listener. And on the other side, I'm going to do netcat 127.0.0.1. And then we're going to go 2222. Hit enter. And I type, hello. Lots of O's. It's important. Hit enter. Shows up on the other side. What did I just do? Well, I created a little port listener on port 2222, and then I connected and I sent through the data, hello! And if we look, 
you can actually see inside of that packet, which is unencrypted, you can see that TCP dump was able to actually see that raw data. That's pretty cool. Now there's some other really neat uh, options that you can run with TCP dump. One of the things you can do with TCP dump is you can actually read in the contents of a file. So in this situation, I'm reading in a PCAP file that we're gonna spend some more time looking into that actually has command and control backdoor data in it. So we're gonna use Tidor. We're gonna look at the traffic, no interaction, just a straight PCAP, it's a really small PCAP. We're gonna read in that capture file. We're gonna see the hex decode and the ASCII decode. And specifically, we wanna look at all the data coming and going from a host in this situation. The compromised host is 10.0.2.15 and the port is 80. So whenever I hit enter, it's gonna read that data from that capture file and you can see the HTTP requests being sent back and forth. And up here a little bit further, you're actually able to see the encoded data with the back door being sent. We'll talk more about encoding and decoding a little bit later, but this kind of helps you get started with TCP dump. One other quick note, whenever you're running with TCP dump, you can run TCP dump and uh, dump, and then you can also write out uh, the data to a file. So I'm gonna specify my ethernet interface, but now I'm gonna do the minus W and I'm gonna give it a file I hate clowns.pcap. Let's go do I hate clowns two. There we go. And now what it's gonna do is it's going to sniff, of course, if I'm root, I do sudo, hit enter. Now it's sniffing on our interface and it's writing all the data to a file. This can then be shared with other professionals for troubleshooting and offline analysis. One of the other great features of TCP dump is it is very fast, very lightweight, and very efficient at capturing and writing out large packet capture files. So I hope you had a good time in this video and I hope to see you in the other videos in the very near future. This episode was brought to you by Black Hills Information Security, specializing in pen testing, red teaming, threat hunting, webcast, open source tools, and blogs. It was also brought to you by AI Hunter from Active Countermeasures. The AI stands for actual intelligence. Need a threat hunting solution for the network? Check out AI Hunter. It is also brought to you by Wild West Hackenfest, currently offering conferences in San Diego and Deadwood, South Dakota. To check out the schedule and the speaker lineup, check out wildwesthackenfest.com.